really starts in a fairly familiar way. I was blessed to grow up in an extremely loving Christian family, and from regularly attending church, I'd witnessed others becoming Christians, and I knew that this was something that I wanted to do myself. So at the age of about eight years old, I made the decision to ask Jesus into my life. I actually still remember it quite vividly, sitting on the edge of my bed, praying with my parents in my bright yellow bedroom. <laughs> However, as the years went by, for various reasons as a family, we slowly stopped going to church. We got more and more used to those Sunday morning lions, and whilst I still considered myself to be a Christian, in reality, I distanced a lot from my faith, only really turning back to God when there was something I felt I needed or I wanted, basically just when it suited. So for me, I feel that my personal story really begins much later down the line, when I was about 20 years old. I was away in my second year of university, and back at home, my family had connected with old friends at Dublin Christian Fellowship. I wasn't attending church at the time, but I started to make visits to Dublin when I would come back home. And it was during these visits that I was told about a volunteering trip to Hungary. Now those of you who know me will know that working with younger children is a passion of mine. So when I heard that the trip was to help and teach English in a children's summer camp, it really seemed like an opportunity that I couldn't turn away from. Now I actually went on this trip with a lot of apprehension, not just about things like what the camp would be like or if I would like Hungarian food, I think cherry soup is a thing, just giving <laughs> context. Um, but it was also around the Christian side of things. I felt brand new to it all and I felt I had so much to learn. There were stories, songs, which others on the trip had known for years, which I was hearing for the first time. And I was worried whether I was capable enough of sharing these and being able to teach others. But I still say to this day that this trip was the making of me and my faith. It helped me to grow so much, because it was in those times when I was worried or I felt completely out of my comfort zone, that I learned to rely on God and just to ask Him for help. And I wish I could describe the peace I felt from learning to trust Him and just knowing that whatever happened, everything would be okay. And you know who I also learned so much from during that trip? Not just the leaders and those who seem to know so much, but from those young Hungarian children who approached everything with so much delight and so much joy, despite some of them barely even knowing a word of English, let alone a story or a song, they really put things into perspective for me, as even in those times where neither of us had a clue what each other was saying, they showed me so much love and friendship, and they were actually an example to me of what being a Christian was all about. So if you haven't had it already, I love this trip. So much so that I went to London three times, and it really was a turning point in my life. Following my first trip to Hungary, <laughs> my faith continued to grow as I had some amazing experiences in a church on my year abroad in Spain, then in a new church back in Exeter for my final year of university, and then following graduation, I returned home to Swansea to fully become part of the Dunford Christian Fellowship, which I can honestly say that over the past eight years has not just been a church, but has become a family to me. So after all this, you're probably wondering why it has taken me until now to be baptised, after being back in Dunford for so long. And this is where I'm going to be completely honest and say that over the years, I've become comfortable in my ways. I've been comfortable in a church where I'm so fortunate to be so loved and supported. And as a result, I've been guilty of letting the busyness of life take over and of putting other things first when this should have been a priority. And during those busy moments, there have been times where I've started to feel distant again, where the doubts in myself have started to creep back in. So I kept convincing myself that I would be baptised in the future when I was strong in my faith and I was doing all the right things and really when I felt I was back to being good enough. But over time what I've come to realise is that I am not perfect by any means and life is always going to be full of ups and downs. But in God's eyes, I am always good enough. So I get pushed on So I know that there is nothing I can do to make God love me more or love me less. And in those times when I distance myself, I know that God never leaves. And I've come to realise that I'm constantly going to be learning throughout life and I will make mistakes. But even in those moments where I realise I've done wrong, I remind that it's okay because Jesus has already done all the hard work. And that's exactly why he died for us. So I started this year knowing that I wanted it to be different and that I wanted something to change. And 
and as always, in God's timing, on the first church service of this year, which also happened to fall on the very first day of 2023, Phil gave a message about fixing our eyes on Jesus. He questioned what our attention was on in life right now, what our priorities may have been over the last year, and encouraged us to turn our focus back to Jesus. And that was exactly the message I needed to hear, and what has led me to be baptised today. So this is me now fixing my eyes on Jesus. This is me wanting to show my family and friends that I love our Lord, and that I'm so thankful to Jesus who died on that cross, and that I am committed to following him. Fantastic! And can all see the back? Yeah. Modern technology is fantastic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it's brilliant. It's such a thrill tonight. I know it'll be such a thrill. I'm not going to ask Kate to say anything at this point to baptize his own daughter. And just so you know, in Denmark, it's just we're always thrilled to have family involved in baptizing as well. It's such a great privilege. So, Lauren, right, um, do you believe Jesus died on the cross for you? Do you believe he rose again from the dead? I do. Do you want to fix your eyes on Jesus in your life? I do. We're going to baptise you. Okay. Lauren, well, yeah. I'm going to confess your faith in the Lord Jesus. You accept the thing as your own we We're going to baptise you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 